What's going on everybody? Gunner here. Uh, today I want to show you guys how to add a stinger hook to a fly that's already finished. Right, and, and this is going to do a few things for you. Um, one, hopefully it's going to make the flies that you already have tied more applicable. And, and what I mean is a lot of times I tend to gravitate towards saltwater style tying. I really like, you know, short shank, hooks up front, nice long tailing materials. And you have to understand this is perfectly suitable for bucket mouth feeding fish that inhale a bunch of water, they open their mouth up and they suck whole, you know, baits in head first. Think striped bass, right? <laughs> Think tarpon. Think uh, peacock bass, largemouth bass, right? Bucket mouth. Um, but these flies, what you have to understand is they're equally suitable across all range of fish, right? Because this just matches a forage size and silhouette, and that forage size and silhouette can be found all across the planet. And you might be fishing for a different style of fish, like a, a kind of a T-bone style, grab and slash style fish, like a barracuda or pike and muskie or bluefish. And in which case, that kind of mid-body stinger hook is gonna be fairly critical to hooking up on a lot of fish. Now, the patterns are still effective, and unless you tie it pre-rigged with removable stinger hooks, you're kind of out of luck. You might miss a lot of fish and you might have to tie a bunch of new patterns that have, you know, either articulated or shank up front and a hook and back or some sort of combination to move a hook rearward. And, and what I want to show you how to do is just adapt a technique from the gear world that was introduced to me from my friend John Littlefield. And what you're going to do is basically make a rig <coughs> that's going to allow you to add a stinger hook to a finished fly. Now this is kind of a perfect uh, fly to take this in context because this is probably the best pop lip of our time in life. Absolutely massive, deep cup, the thing just side to side. It's crazy. Uh, and for, you know, striped bass or peacock or whatever you're doing, this would be perfectly suitable. But in fresh water for pike and muskie, basically I've had this fly tied up for a year and a half and I have no interest in fishing it because it doesn't have a mid-body hook. And I just know the hookup percentage for pike and muskie are going to be very, very low and I don't want to kind of lose an opportunity at a fish. And with this technique, I got a 50-pound wire trace on there with a four Gamakatsu stinger right here in the, middle of the, <laughs> in the middle of the fly. And this year, I'm now bloody excited to fish this thing, you know, right on the edge of a weed bed in this perchy color combo just going bonkers and hopefully sticking a big muskie on it. And, and so the last thing I'll just say, I've had a few comments, uh, and obviously people interested in adding stinger hooks to the, the swim bait hooks. Right, and this is how I would do it. This is the rig I'd use to add a stinger hook, you can see it right there, to the six out swim bait hook. And what's really cool is in the water, obviously it's, you can change the orientation, you can have a hook up or hook down or kind of hook off to the side, however you want to do it. And the stinger hooks, they just loop on and off. So if you want to fish it without the stinger hook, then you don't need the stinger hook. You can just take the stinger hook off and then you just have a little wire trace back here. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do. The applications are kind of all across the board, even things like jigs. Again, this is from the gear industry. Jigs is actually where it came from for jigging walleyes on the Detroit River. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's dive in. Now I'm obviously going to do this on a bare hook, and I'm going to kind of use a you know short shank salt style that I would gravitate towards for tying, say, like a bulkhead. So this is a 3 out A-Rex Blue Water. Now what you want is you want a fairly large eyed stinger hook so that you don't crimp or compromise your wire. And it's gonna, you know, the size depends on your application, also the diameter of your wire. So I got like a two out gummy stinger and I got a four out gummy stinger and I carry both of those guys. And what you're gonna want for wire, this is Rio bite wire. This is 40 pounds, so it's pretty big. And you kind of just pull your wire out and you just want to make sure that it doesn't have just like a redonkulous amount of memory. Like that's not bad, right? I can make a fairly straight stinger rig out of this. If you go to a shop and you're picking out your wire and you pull it out and it's coiled and has a gross amount of memory to it, don't use that. Now I am going to use nylon coated stainless steel. That's what the real bite wire is. It's a multi-strand stainless with a nylon coating. The reason why is I'm going to put a knot in this. That's going to be our, our looped loop for the stinger hook. And so that knot, I'm going to weld it with some Zappa Gap. And that, that plastic coating and the Zappa Gap will bond together really nice. And you never have to worry about that knot ever loosening up or anything like that. Um, the other thing you need to finish the rig, some crimp sleeves. Now, we're going to use a pretty small size because I'm using pretty light wire. So it's either going to be a size 2, which is pretty small, most likely a size 3. So I'm going to use a size 3 just round crimp 
with some crimpers. So let's do this. Cut off a section of wire here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna tie a pretty big perfection loop. So I'm gonna make that second loop pretty gnarly because you need the whole loop to be able to accommodate the entire length of your hook. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I just have that loosely pulled. So you can see I just have the whole system set up in a way where I can really seat that knot. And so you're gonna want this loop to be kind of tailored to the length of your hook, but that's gonna fit the four out right there, no problem. And then I can come in and trim that pretty close. And then what she can do is just under some light tension here, just put a small dab of super glue right there on that knot. Now, I'm like, literally I'm just gonna hold this kind of casually until that glue sets up. So, let's skip forward a hair. Now I'm gonna come in again with the four out gom stinger hook here. Gama, gami. <laughs> I'm gonna take that wire and I'm just gonna very casually compress it. Now you don't want to super like you don't you don't want to smash it or else you're gonna put a big hard crimp in it and it's not gonna be happy with you and it'll likely break way faster than you ever wanted it to. I can push that loop through the hook eye, draw it down and around and seat that and now I have a stinger rig right there just single strand 40, 40 pound test. And so obviously that knot is gonna set the minimum distance that I can crimp that to a hook, right? That knot's gonna set the minimum distance. That length, again, for the perfection loop is relative to the hook length shank because I have to fit the whole loop around the, around the system to get it in there. <coughs> now I'm gonna come in with my size three round crimp. Tread my wire on there. Thread it back out. And so this could be a fully tied fly right here, right? This could be, you know, literally this big old beefy saltwater fly. It could be, <laughs> you know, the whole point of this is to do it uh, on something that you already have tied and rigged up. Otherwise you could just tie a stinger hook rig on the shank and you have no need to do this, right? I'm gonna cinch that down nice and tight. And I'm just gonna put it in the vise so that everything is out of my way. And all you're gonna do is you know, check to make sure you like the orientation, you like how everything's looking, and then cinch that down basically as hard as you can. Coming with some crimp tools here. That right there is an additional just kind of add-on stinger hook right there it just sits right in the bend of your hook right there and then if you want to make it uh, so that that doesn't move around too much you can come in with these UV soft glow beads that I introduced in in the swim bait hook flies right and you just take one of those beads here If you haven't purchased any, I'd recommend the size three or the size four. Those seem to be the kind of most universal uh, kind of sizes that are appropriate. Size four obviously being for your, your bigger hooks. And now you've put a hot spot on that hook bend and you've stopped that from really being able to move down that bend. So you can really kind of control the orientation however you want that to lay kind of in your fly and move that up or down and stop it from being able to slide off if you have barbarous and all that. So that's the removable stinger hook. Now as I, I finish this video, I'm probably gonna repeat myself a little bit, but like that's it, that's the rig. It's very simple. You take your, your single hook, bucket mouth style flies, and transition them into kind of slasher grab style flies uh, so that you don't have to tie all these silly rigs. And if you forget to put a stinger hook rig, it's on there. If you wanna change the length, you can change the length. If you wanna change the wire, you can change the wire. If you wanna change out your hooks, you can change out your hooks. If it gets damaged, you can replace it. See what I'm saying? It's very, just, it just keeps giving you options. It just gives you options. So that's the rig, clean and simple, no fuss. Again, it's, 
40 pound real bite wire, a little bit of super glue on a perfection loop. The length of the loop is relative to the size of the hook. Crimp the wire a little bit so it'll go through the hook eye, but don't compromise it or else it'll snap right there, especially if you use like a single strand, if you ever play with that. Uh, it's like a size three round sleeve. When you crimp this, if you can see that, I have it crimped in the middle with a little bit of flare on either end so that especially coming off that hook so that the barrel sleeve is nice and kind of open there so that it doesn't dig into my wire and cut my wire. And then a size four, because this is a saltwater hook, a size four UV soft glow bead. I don't just make up words. The words are from the packaging so that you guys can Google it and find it. That'll stop that from sliding down. So thanks for watching. Hope that helps you out in your predator fishing adventures. Have a good one.